everyone, welcome to our day two distributor spring training. Let's take a look at the topics we're gonna to cover today. We're gonna to be looking at the literature library, the AHRI matchup document, our charge calculator, edge tech, and our YouTube channel. These are tools that I wanna make sure you guys are aware of when it comes to helping out contractors. When it comes to the literature library, there's gonna be documents available to you guys as a distributor and to the contractors out in the field. They're gonna be the tech specs, the QRD, the install instructions, parts lists, the supplemental charging chart, and customer materials. And we're gonna take a look at each one of those today and how that applies to the literature library. The first thing is gonna be the tech specs of the equipment. Now, the information that can be found in the tech specs is gonna be unit dimensions, electrical data, vent table if we're working on a high efficiency furnace, unit accessories, system matches, and heating and cooling information. So this is just a bullet point document that'll give you those bits of information in a, in a quick and easy fashion um, when trying to find information on the unit. The next thing we'll look at is our QRD document. Now the QRD document is gonna be found in each of our condenser models, but we also post it on our literature library if we're going to a job site after that equipment's been installed. The document gives you a proper matchup for that specific condenser. It also gives you charging information as well, the charge amount for that specific matchup, because if you have a two ton paired with a two ton, you may actually have to add an additional amount of refrigerant and that will be found on the QRD. And we'll also list the additional charging amounts needed if your line set is longer than 15 or 20 feet. And you also wanna make sure that you look at the QRD for that specific unit to know whether or not it's pre-charged for 15 or 20 feet. Also too, on the QRD, you'll find your metering device changes. Now, most of the time, this happens on our piston-driven equipment, but sometimes what you'll need, depending on the model numbers that you have upon install, you may need to change out a TXV on an evaporator coil. Uh, but this is a document where you'll find, again, all of your matchup, all of your extra charge that you will need to add for that matchup, along with the overall line set length and what you'll need to add to include your line set, along with any metering uh, device changes. On the install instructions for the equipment, um, I've broken this down to some bullet points for a furnace side and the condenser side of the equipment. So on the furnace side, you'll have just your furnace operation in the install instructions, basically what the furnace will go through on a startup sequence. We'll also put in there venting requirements, what the drain line setup will be. The drain line setup is very important because depending on whether or not your furnace is installed upflow or if it's horizontal left or horizontal right, you will also need to take into account how those drains are gonna be run and trapped. We also go into converting from natural gas over to LP. That's very important because we don't want that furnace to soot up if we're running LP gas. Going along with that, we'll also give a, a table in there for your burner orifice changes, depending on the altitude that that furnace is being installed in. Again, all of this is very important information upon startup because we don't want that furnace to soot up, um, which will likely happen if it's not converted over to LP on the gas valve side and the burner side. We also put wiring diagrams in the uh, install instructions along with the blower speed setup. If you're looking at an older install instructions, that blower speed setup will be in there. If you're installing a brand new piece of equipment, um, we actually put in a separate blower chart in the packet for that particular furnace. Um, so on brand new stuff, it's going to be separate than the install instructions. Um, on kind of older pieces of equipment, it's gonna be uh, in that install instructions as well. On the condenser side, on the install instructions, we'll have uh, clearance requirements. Uh, the main thing that we get a question on is what's the height requirement for clearance? You know, if a condenser is being put under a deck, um, that can be found in your install instructions. Uh, we also put in charging information 
in our install instructions, um, as, as well as low voltage wire connections and wiring diagrams on our condensers. So um, if you're having questions on how do we wire up our condenser um, on the low voltage side, especially we get a lot of calls on heat pumps and, and what wires go with, uh, with what terminals, that can be found in our install instructions. When it comes to looking up parts, the main two ways that you can look up parts is go through our Enora website, which is what you guys have on the distributor level, or you can go to our literature library and look up parts that way on our part sheet for that piece of equipment, whatever you're working on. But yeah, I would say most of you guys probably end up going through Enora when it comes to checking parts. When looking up parts, you want to make sure that you get the serial number from the contractor. This is really important because we want to make sure that one, we get the right part for that specific unit, but also two, it'll help you direct on what avenue to take depending on the age of the equipment. Now, if you're working with a unit that's manufactured before of 2007, you're going to be looking at our archive product library. If you're after 2007, you're going to be looking at our regular literature library on, on finding parts if you go through our, our online library when searching parts. Now, what I have here circled is our archive link directly on our technical literature library, and that's the link you're going to use if you're working on a piece of equipment that's before 2007. The next document that we'll look at is our supplemental charging chart. This is a newer document that we've come out with to help guys charging in the field. And what this document will provide is more charging information than will be found on the charging sticker, which is on the back side of the panel of the condenser. This document will include our 13, 14, and our 16 series equipment. And what it will do is provide a more complete picture of how the system should be performing based on its current conditions. Also in this document, you'll have superheat, subcooling numbers, we'll give head pressure and suction pressure numbers um, because some guys want to know um, not just what their superheat number is, but what should my suction pressure be, for example, and what should my head pressure be um, you know, based on my, on my current conditions. That information can be found in our supplemental charging chart on that. Another thing we'll take a look at is consumer materials. Now, this tab will be on that specific piece of equipment, whether you're working on a furnace or an air conditioner, and it's going to be found in our tech literature library here. Under this tab, we'll have warranty information, owner's manuals, and equipment brochures. And I invite you guys to look at this information and make sure you relay that to your contractors in the field. One thing I want to make sure you guys are aware of is another link that we have available to you when looking at AHRI matches. On the literature library, we have a quick link for AHRI matchups. The link for this document will be at the top of the page labeled Download AHRI Matches. This is a quick and easy way to get an AHRI number to check on a match. So sometimes when you're filling out either a energy rebate or something of that nature, you may need the actual AHRI number to put on that form. The quickest and easiest way to get that information is if you just go to our literature library and you may have seen download AHRI matches on the literature library. Now, sometimes if you have a contractor that's trying to apply for an energy rebate or something of that nature, they may need the actual AHRI number in order uh, to get that rebate. Now, the easiest way to get this information is to download the document that we have provided for you. This is gonna be a picture of what that document kind of looks like. We do update this document regularly. And what you're actually looking at is on the very first column, we have our AHRI numbers. And then what we'll have is the type of equipment, whether that's an AC or a heat pump, along with the brand, the outdoor model, your indoor model, we also then list the cooling capacity in BTUs as far as uh, whatever that particular matchup is. We'll also give the SEER value as well, and then the CFM that was tested at the time of that matchup. 
Again, this is just a screenshot of what that document looks like, but it's a lot easier to grab that AHRI number by using that link uh, than actually going to, their, to uh, their website. Another tool I wanna bring to your guys' attention if you don't know already is our charge calculator. Our charge calculator was developed to help contractors check charge on our equipment. And the calculator is a web-based program the calculator is an excellent commissioning tool uh, for contractors out in the field. So when you're doing a startup on a piece of equipment, um, it's a great tool to determine one, that we've got the charge where we need it and, um, and we'll help them whether they need to add charge or remove charge based on their, uh, based on their install. Now you can get to our charge calculator by one or two ways. On the service panels of the equipment, you'll have a charge me sticker uh, that has a QR reader code, so you can use your phone to get to the charge calculator. Or if you just go to chargecalculator.com, that'll also take you to our charging website. So what I'm gonna show you now is what the charge calculator looks like and how that will apply to the guys in the field. So let's take a look. So when we click our link to go to our charge calculator, there's two things that we require from the guys in the field uh, when using the calculator. The first thing is, is just the zip code where they're using it along with an email address. You'll hit sign in. So our first screen here is all about our system setup. So what type of system you've got, the SEER value, all that good stuff. So the first drop down menu will be for what type of coils that you have, whether or not you have micro channel indoor and outdoor, or maybe a tube and fin outdoor unit paired with the micro channel indoor. So our first selection that we'll do, just per our example, we'll do micro channel coils indoor and outdoor. The next thing that you will select is what your control type is, which basically is what type of metering device we're using on our indoor coil. So for our example, we'll choose TXV. The next thing will be our tonnage of our equipment. So we'll select three ton for our example. The next thing will be our SEER value. We'll select 14. And then it's gonna ask for our suction line diameter. We'll choose three quarter. It'll then also ask you for uh, what your overall line set length is. By default, we put 15 feet in there because that's what the units are gonna be pre-charged for. 15 or 20 feet, it'll kind of depend on the on the model number and you just wanna look at the QRD for the exact amount. But most of the stuff is charged for 15 feet. And then on the bottom box here, it's gonna ask you for that specific amount of charge. And what that basically means is, is that you'll need to know the base charge that comes in the condenser. You'll need to take into account your overall line set, add that amount in to your overall number, and then what you'll need to do is look at your indoor model number and look at the QRD sheet and see if that condenser paired with that indoor model then needs additional refrigerant charge. If you don't know that information, that's not a huge deal. What you can do is hit calculate base charge. And what we end up doing is just taking an average of our three ton equipment as our baseline. Now, if you wanted to find out what your overall charge should be, for your given system, what you'll do is hit this question mark here. It's gonna kick you over to our literature library, which I'll just kind of run through here as if I'm doing this in the field. I'll select a uh, split AC. Select a 14 sear straight AC. And then you can go right into our QRD document. And this is, again, the document where you can find all of the charge amounts that are needed, along with any uh, additional charge that you may have to add for your particular equipment. Now let's go back over to our charge calculator. So what I'm gonna do is hit just base charge on, uh, on our charge calculator. What it will then prompt the contractor to fill out is the following. One uh, is their outdoor ambient condition. So, that can range from anywhere from about 50 to 130 degrees. Basically, they just need to select what their outdoor temperature is. So per example, we'll select 80 degrees. 
Humidity level will keep about 50. And then we'll also need to know what our indoor dry bulb temperature is. So let's say we're running a little bit cooler, 72-ish. Uh, we'll charge, for, uh, change for our indoor dry bulb. Uh, the next thing that you'll do is hit start timer. Now, the timer that you see here is 15 minutes. Uh, the main thing that I tell guys is that you don't have to wait 15 minutes to check your charge. It's just a good tool as a reference point um, when you actually started checking your charge amount. So the next thing is, is that we'll uh, have to input our suction pressure, our head pressure, along with our liquid and our suction line temperatures to give us our charge amount. So for our example here, let's do um, uh, 400 for our head pressure. Uh, our liquid line temperature, let's do 81. Our suction pressure, let's do 120. And suction line temperature, let's do 43 and see where we're at. So once you have your information inputted, you'll then hit calculate charge. It's then going to take either the exact amount of charge that your system requires, which all that information is found on your QRD, or it'll take the average. And the average is actually pretty close to where we would need to be at. So we won't be too far off the mark on that. So once we hit calculate a charge, it then gives you a percentage of charge that's in the system, and then it gives us a subcooling number. So for my example, I knew we were gonna be overcharged, so we're 128% of our charge amount and our subcooling number is 35 degrees. So we are way overcharged on our system here per the conditions that we put in at the beginning of the charge calculator. So what it's telling me is that we need to remove about 10 ounces of charge to get to where we need to be for our charge information. Now, if you scroll down either on a tablet, phone, or on your browser, we'll give our uh, conditions that we put in for our head pressure, suction pressure, and our line temperatures. Uh, we also put in here what our target subcooling number is. So our target subcooling is about uh, in between 11 and 12 degrees. Now, if you want to then recalculate your charge, so for our example, we would need to remove some charge out of the system. So let's say we got our recovery cylinder and all that good stuff and we're taking charge out. Let's reevaluate our charge numbers here. So we took charge out and we're gonna update this. So let's do 88. Let's say our suction pressure really didn't move. And then what you can do is hit recalculate charge. So we're pretty close. So we're 104%. We still need to remove about three to four ounces of charge. The other thing I want to point out is what our system subcooling is. So we did drop to about 13 and a half degrees of subcooling and our target subcooling again is about 11 degrees of subcooling. So we're on the right track as far as removing charge on the system. What we also have here at the top, I just want to point out, we have a literature library link. So if you hit that, it opens up another tab, takes you directly to our literature library site. Um, but basically, I just wanted to go through a brief example of what the charge calculator is and how it can be applied to guys in the field. Another tool that we have available to you guys on the distributor level and the contractor level is our EdgeTech training website. What you will find on this website is going to be our HVAC tips, marketing material, and it's also mobile friendly. So if the guys out in the field are using this on a smartphone or on a tablet, they'll be able to navigate the site easily. Now we do categorize our quick tips on our website. So if you're looking for a specific video or if you know the type of equipment you're working on, that'll help narrow down your search and find what you're looking for. Another tool for finding training material is our YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com through a browser or you use YouTube's app, just type in Nortec HVAC and you'll come across our training channel. What you'll find on our channel is video playlists, quick tips, lunch and learns, Resner branded products, 
marketing programs, and sales tips. And another advantage to using YouTube is that you'll be able to interact with the people that are watching the videos, and you'll also be able to share that content a lot easier. Now, let's take a look at the questions that I've been filling in over our session and see what you guys got. Let's take a look. So first question is, where do we go for part numbers if they're not on the archive library? So I'm assuming this would be something um, if it's a older unit that um, is just not on the archive library list. Uh, so basically what I would recommend that you guys do is just call into your customer service group um, um, where I'm at and our customer service reps will be able to assist you with part numbers, get you pricing availability on it, because uh, sometimes when you're talking older equipment, the part may not be available anymore. Um, but yeah, so on, on uh, units that are older or old enough to where they're actually not on the archive library, just go ahead and call into us and we'll get the part number for you and then availability on it as well. So uh, just feel free to give us a call on that. Uh, another question is, the charge calculator, is this an app that the, uh, the text can download? Again, the charge calculator is a web-based program, so that's going to require an internet connection on the mobile device, whether that's a tablet or a cell phone, or if you end up using a laptop. Um, so again, you have to have uh, some sort of access to the internet in order to run that program. Um, so as of right now, it's not, a, it's not an app um, that we can download off the Play Store or, the, uh, um, or the, the App Store for Apple. So, um, so yes, it's just a, uh, a web-based program on that that requires internet connection. Another question is, is how often do we update that Excel file for the AHRI sheet that we went over? So that file, I don't know exactly how often we update that. I, I'd have to look into that, whether if it's uh, an every, uh, if it's a monthly thing or if it's an every week kind of a deal or if it's a change that comes out. I don't exactly know how often we update that. What I will say though is that the, um, in the, either the top left or the top right corner of that document, there is a date um, that we give as the last updated amount or the, up, the last update for that, uh, um, for that document. So um, you'll be able to see when the last time that we updated that Excel sheet. So that's another way that you can get matches for the equipment that you're either uh, going to match up or trying to see if there's a match with equipment already installed in the field. Because uh, again, sometimes AHRI's website can be a little confusing sometimes. So that Excel document, you know, if you're familiar with using Excel, you can basically check mark, you know, what model number you're working on and that'll give you all of the um, indoor model uh, matching equipment, in order models for matching equipment, along with SEER value and other information that you would find on AHRI's website, but um, that Excel document's a little bit faster than going to their website. Again, uh, today's content along with uh, yesterday's, and then we did do two days last week for contractor training. Um, all of this content should be available to you guys on our EdgeTech website. Um, I'd have to get with communications and see if we are going to put the distributor training, which was today and yesterday, on YouTube or not. But I would think it's at least going to be on our EdgeTech uh, website. So. Um, those are some avenues that you can look at uh, if you want to either show your contractors um, what we talked about today um, and yesterday. I do know that the contractor ones we did last week, those are on YouTube. So i um, not sure if, if today's content and yesterday's will be on YouTube or not, but it's going to be on our, on our uh, Edge Tech website.
Another question is um, content uh, that we're coming out with. So basically, uh, what, what he's asking here is, um, what's a good way to suggest content for us to work on and to be most helpful to you guys? So really what I would suggest is that, um, you know, when you're talking to your contractors, maybe throw that question out to them. Uh, basically what you guys can do as distributors is if you wanted to shoot us an email to our tech service email uh, for either uh, topics that you would like us to cover, um, content that we might be missing that you guys are seeing in the field, um, you know, from, from contractors, you're more than welcome to shoot us an email and, um, and let us know. So we have covered a lot of stuff. Um, you know, when it comes to troubleshooting, uh, it's definitely with micro channel and just overall refrigerant troubleshooting um, on our YouTube channel and our uh, uh, Edge Tech website that we have available to you guys. So um, just shoot us an email into our tech service email, which again is hvac.techservice at nortech.com. Um, and then uh, you know, we can uh, take that in stride and see what you guys have uh, for content suggestions. So I always want to throw that out there because uh, it's a great question, but I always want to throw that out there because we want the information that we're providing to you guys to be relevant to obviously what you're dealing with in the field and the equipment. And especially, you know, what I want to do is create content that uh, will be most helpful to you guys in the field when it comes to troubleshooting, installing, and just overall, um, uh, you know, day to day in in, uh, in the HVAC field on that. Again, guys, if you have um, any other questions, just feel free to submit those in relation to uh, today's topics, and I will be happy to answer those. All right, guys, so what I'm actually going to do is just kind of uh, leave it at that for today. Uh, today was a, a shorter day, if you will, as far as uh, training and just, um, just overall questions coming in. So um, I just want to thank you for uh, tuning in today um, and uh, tuning in to yesterday. And if you guys had viewed uh, days uh, from last week, I just want to appreciate your time. Um, uh, to, to view the stuff that we did have come out to you guys. Um, I hope you guys have a great upcoming spring season and summer season. Uh, hopefully it's a busy one for you guys. It definitely will be in tech service. Um, so again, um, have a great upcoming year and uh, stay safe out there. Thanks and have a great day.